Amsterdam to London by Eurostar train could not be simpler. Starting from the Grand Amsterdam Centrale, we go city centre to city centre in just over 4 hours at speeds of 300 km per hour, crossing 4 countries and through the underwater channel tunnel. Join me on this bargain trip between two of Europe's greatest capitals. Now sit back and enjoy the ride. As with most international and domestic trains in Amsterdam, Eurostar services to London depart from Amsterdam Central Station, holding a prominent presence in the heart of the Dutch capital city centre. The station itself was completed in 1884 and designed by Dutch architect Pierre Coopers, who also designed the city's famous Rijksmuseum. Whilst the station is currently undergoing a renovation programme which should see completion in 2030, the full effects of that were not present at the time of recording, meaning we get to admire the station's charm and iconic design in full, both inside and out. There are of course some modern elements which have been gradually added over the years, case in point the automatic ticket gates. Eurostar offers both paper and e-tickets, just present the barcode on the reader and you'll be through. Whilst not the busiest station in the Netherlands, Amsterdam Central is still the second busiest, seeing over 192,000 passengers per day and still stands as the country's most visited Rijksmonument. The underground subway not only contains the majority of the station's shops, it's also used to navigate the station's 11 platforms, though this is made easier by Platform 15 being where Eurostar's London services depart from, despite not yet being shown on the board as we're a little bit early. In the meantime, we emerge to the view of the original 1889 built train shed, which even on a gloomy day like this still looks spectacular. It's especially good at highlighting the striking livery of Dutch national rail operator NS on one of their iconic Koplopper trains. Stay tuned for a video on this soon. Whilst you do have less time penalties taking the Eurostar compared to flying, it is still recommended to arrive around an hour and a half to 45 minutes ahead of departure, as you still have to check in and this closes around 30 minutes before the train's scheduled departure, so don't leave it too late. At the time of recording, Eurostar's check-in lounge was at the eastern end of platform 15B in the building ahead. The boarding process here is no different to Eurostar's other stations. You'll go through a ticket check before a security check that normally takes around 5 minutes if there's no congestion. There are no liquid limits and no need to take out any electronics. And finally, there are two passport checks performed. The UK isn't part of the European Schengen Zone, so both the British and the Dutch conduct checks to allow travel to the UK from the Netherlands and vice versa. Don't expect too much from the lounge. It's pretty basic and doesn't have as much on offer as St Pancras, Brussels and Gare du Nord do. The ongoing refurbishment of Amsterdam Central will soon make this building redundant in June 2024 and from December 2024 a new check-in area will replace the legacy one and increase the current capacity of 250 passengers to 650. During this time, Eurostar passengers to London will have to get off at Brussels to do both security and passport checks before reboarding the train to London, as Eurostar did pre-2020. Once reopened, I really do hope it looks a lot better than this. To be honest, I think it's quite depressing. Oh, and don't expect a business premier lounge here also. Passengers on a business premier ticket instead have access to the NS International and Regus Express lounge on platform 1. Having used it several times, it's a great place to relax and work for around 15 to 20 minutes, but nothing more in my opinion. You're also allowed one free drink as well before having to pay if you want more. In the background, our train can be seen leaving platform 13 for the sidings, having just completed a journey from London. The train now returns to platform 15, ready to form our service back down to St Pancras. We're now allowed to board around 20 to 30 minutes ahead of departure. On the London to Amsterdam route, Eurostar uses these Siemens Valaro E320 trains. A total of 17 were built between 2011 and 2018. The trains were ordered with the intention of Eurostar expanding its services beyond France and Belgium, which the legacy TMSC fleet was unable to achieve, and enabled the launch of the Amsterdam service in April 2018. It's also worth noting that this journey was done just before Eurostar announced its rebrand following its merger with fellow cross-border high-speed operator Talis, so the train is still wearing the former logo, which I personally prefer. Which is your favourite? 
Each E320 has 16 coaches. Standard Premier is in the rear three coaches, whilst Business Premier is in the front three, with the remaining 10 containing Standard Class, where I'll be today. Standard Class is in the 2x2 seating configuration, with a reasonable mix of airline and table seats, of which I'm in the former for this trip. Our route to London sees us cross the Netherlands, Belgium and France, with stops in each country at Rotterdam, Brussels and Lille respectively. We then travel under the English Channel through the Underwater Channel Tunnel to make the final stretch into London where we're expected to arrive at around 5pm UK time after over 4 hours of travel time between the two city centres. Not bad! Our departure from Amsterdam Central is on time at 13.47 Central European time. As we leave, you may notice the Talis train in the background, which since this video was recorded, now runs under the Eurostar brand as I previously mentioned. This can be confusing seeing as both depart from Platform 15, but only Eurostar Blue trains run through to London. Eurostar Red, or ex Talis, run from here to Brussels and Paris and don't serve London. A Deutsche Bahn ICE 3M can also be seen in the sidings, preparing to form the ICE International Departure to Frankfurt and Cologne, which as with Talis, I've reviewed on this channel before. We now navigate out of the Amsterdam suburbs on the line to Schiphol Airport. This is one of my favourite parts of the route to Rotterdam, particularly as we use a number of flyovers and have great urban views. I know I say this in almost all my videos, but it's always satisfying speeding past cars on a motorway. Seven minutes into the journey, we now enter the underground tunnels and pass through Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, the main airport in the Netherlands, which in 2019, well, pre-pandemic, saw almost 72 million passengers, making it Europe's third busiest airport. Eurostar services to London sadly don't serve the airport, which in my opinion would be great for those making onward connections to and from flights. Fortunately, the airport's already well served by both national and international trains regardless. After leaving Schiphol Airport and passing Hofdorp, we move on to the HSL Zaud, the high speed line connecting Amsterdam to Rotterdam and the Belgian border since 2009, with a line speed of 300 km per hour. Right, I think now's a good time to check out the features of the E320. To be honest, the standard class seats on the E320s are not as amazingly comfortable as the TMSTs, but they do the job. There are foldable armrests in the middle and the aisles too, and the reduced seat comfort is partially made up for by the legroom, which I found to be more generous than standard class on the E300s. There is also a lever you can pull to operate a moderate recline function by sliding your body forwards and backwards to aid this further. The fold-down tray table is a reasonable size and will easily hold a laptop and other items if you wish. There's also a pocket holder at the back of the seat for coats and other items, though for the former, you'd be better off using the coat hangers just above. Just next to these is a seat reservation display, though annoyingly I don't think I've ever seen these used in the many times I've used the E320s in the past year or so, but it future-proofs the trains I guess. Whilst you can't see it as well, there is a standard UK power socket to the left and a European power socket to the right, providing added flexibility with charging electronic devices. And finally, there's a drawdown blind, though this only partially reduces the view as opposed to blocking it out completely. Overall, the interior is not too bad, but things such as the seat do knock it down comfort wise from my point of view. We now exit the high speed line temporarily and arrive into our first stop, which is Rotterdam. This is the second largest city in the Netherlands, as well as the country's economic powerhouse. A Eurostar departure terminal is also present here, which has a capacity of 150 people, hence why passport control was ruled out here as an option for Eurostar services whilst works at Amsterdam Central take place. Navigating out of the Rotterdam suburbs, we pass the Stadion Feyenoord, which was used as the venue for the UEFA Euro 2000 tournament. 
To the left is the Holland's Deep River, which we cross using the dedicated bridge for HSL Zaal traffic. The river connects to the Scheldt River and Antwerp near the Dutch-Belgian border. Here's what standard and business Premier looks like on the E320s, which is in a 2x1 configuration. The latter offers a hot meal instead of a cold one in the former, as well as increased flexibility and lounge access. To learn more about standard Premier, click the link above now. Each Eurostar set, regardless of whether it's an E300 or E320, contains two cafe cars on board in coaches 8 and 9. At the time of filming, these were branded as Café Metropole, but this has since been changed to the Eurostar Café following the rebrand and merger with Talis. As you can see, they're incredibly popular. I bought a bag of M&Ms and an orange juice, which cost me £5 or €6.80. Whilst this may be expensive, bear in mind we are on an international train, so it's not uncommon to see prices as high as what I've paid. I've certainly seen worse. Oh, and here you can also buy Paris Metro tickets, or, as is more applicable in our case, an Oyster card for use on London transport such as the Underground. Brilliant! We have now crossed the border into Belgium and now make our way through Antwerp, the second principal city in the country and the largest near the Dutch border. We cross over the Albert Canal before our E320 eventually works its way through the city of Brussels. Oh, and if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe for more content such as this weekly. I have some incredible trips planned for 2024 and I want you along with me. Thanks! This is Brussels South, our second stop for today. The station is also known as Brussels Zoud in Dutch and Brussel Midi in French, the latter being named after Le Midi, the region of the south of France where trains at this station in the 19th century reached their final destination. Like Paris, Eurostar has been serving Brussels from London for almost 30 years and the Amsterdam service is an extension of the Brussels one. The majority of passengers board our service here owing to the greater capacity over Amsterdam and the large amount of international services to France, Germany and the Netherlands which it connects with. Eurostar has both accessible and standard toilets on board, though you'll of course find more of the former than the latter. The inside is a lot more spacious than most standard toilets out there, and even has room for more amenities such as baby changing facilities and more than one coat hanger. The toilet was clean and everything worked as it should too, so that's a thumbs up from me. We now begin to enter the HSL1, which branches onto France's Elegy Vue Nord to Paris and the Channel Tunnel via the Fleton Triangle. Non-stop services through Lille pass through a tunnel underneath the city at around 200 km per hour, whilst others, like ours, instead enter the tunnels to make a stop at Lille Europe. This is our final stop for today before London, and opened in 1993 to provide international links in northern France with Eurostar and former Talis International services. Eurostar services to and from Paris, however, don't stop at this station, with their services to Amsterdam and Brussels regularly making stops here instead. We now speed along the LGV Nord towards the maximum line speed of 300 km per hour. However, the E320s, as suggested by the name, are capable of doing 320 km per hour as per the limit of some other European high speed lines, particularly those in France. Passing Calais Fréton signals our near entry into the Channel Tunnel. This station was previously served by Eurostar, however, they have since ceased to call here since the COVID-19 pandemic, owing to them instead focusing more on their call route stations. The proximity is also indicated by the large amount of fencing, an attempt to resolve the illegal immigration issues through the tunnel. We also now begin to slow down as we enter the tunnel, which has a maximum speed of 100 miles per hour or 160 kilometers per hour. The Channel Tunnel is a superb piece of engineering, with plans for its construction emerging as early as 1802. 
The eventual successful project, led by Eurotunnel, began construction in 1988 and opened in May 1994, with several Class 319 electric trains making excursions through the tunnel from Sandling, Kent, on the day of opening with invited guests, two making it all the way to France as the first passenger carrying trains to do so. Through our near 20 minutes traversing the tunnel, we travel at depths of nearly 75 metres below sea level in these 50.45 kilometre long tunnels, though sadly the inside doesn't look like a scene from Finding Nemo as the screens depict, so let's skip to the end of our journey through it and enjoy a rather dark and gloomy welcome back to the UK, of course not forgetting to adjust for the one hour timing difference. Emerging from the tunnel sees us in Folkestone, Kent. As well as Eurostar services, the Channel Tunnel is also served by the motor rail shuttle service Lee Shuttle between Calais and Folkestone, with the tracks towards the Folkestone terminal being seen towards the left. Minutes later, we are seen speeding over Ashford International on one of the many HS1 viaducts, another former stop of the Eurostar that was withdrawn for the same reason as Calais. Again, there is no expected date for the return of Eurostar services at Ashford, despite the works done in late 2019 to make the platform suitable for the E320s. The HS1 to London is currently Britain's only high speed line, built to cope with the higher speeds and E320 loading gauges used by Eurostar. Southeastern also operate domestic high speed services on the line and the maximum speed is again 300 km per hour, which we experience travelling over the Medway Viaduct and River Medway. Passing through the White Elephant of Stratford International means we'll shortly arrive into St Pancras. Overall, I love this trip, definitely preferable to flying and even better that I only paid £29. This was through a sale that Eurostar had to celebrate their upcoming merger with Talis at the time, though sadly, prices are not always this cheap. Eurostar Standard and Standard Premier fares are priced well according to demand, with the lowest prices now being £51 and £97 one way if you book well enough in advance and get lucky. Business Premier fares cost over 10 times more than what I paid at a whopping £325 one way due to the increased flexibility, so I can't say Eurostar these days is relatively inexpensive on its own, but this is a city centre to city centre journey in just over 4 hours that avoids the need for transit to and from airports, long wait times and a lot of the other time penalties that flying has to offer. The arrival into London St Pancras is on time at 17.02 UK time. Over to you now. Have you travelled by Eurostar from Amsterdam to London before? Or any other route for that matter? Let me know in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and share it, as well as subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications for more content such as this weekly. Okay, it's time for me to get home ahead of work in the morning. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.